Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today around this virtual campfire, appreciate it. I wanna open up today's video by asking you a question. What is your favorite type of RV? I mean, is it motorized or do you like towables? And if so, either one, what kind? Toy haulers, pop-ups, class B vans? I'd like to know if you have a favorite kind of RV, so drop it in the comments below. All right, so today we're gonna to visit once again with my friend, Jock Milton, who has well, he has his favorite type of RV, and he's going to talk about it. Now, Jock is so bitten, I mean, he is bitten by the RV bug bad, that he decided some 14 years ago that instead of selling everything at the dealership where he works, he wanted to pursue his passion of selling motorhomes. And I got to tell you, he is really good at it. He's smart, experienced, approachable, and very successful. As we continue with this part two of our interview, you'll understand Jock's passion and have a good understanding of why he's so good at what he does. It's an easier way of travel. And I honestly like the clientele that it brought in. Um, they move a little slower. Um, they listen a little bit more. They're willing to, uh, you know, to kind of give and take with you. Um, versus some's, you know, uh, kind of like what we was just talking about. They, you know, they'll listen, and then if they say, no, I don't want to see that, well, then I'll just go back to what they want to see, and that's completely fine. But a lot of times they at least let me take them down that road, and they can easily say no. I mean, we can walk out just like we walked in it. I always tell them that. Um, but it's it's better to have seen, you know, and, and, and not wish you had versus the other way around, you know, uh, didn't see and wish you had after the, you know, you done bought the wrong one, and then, you have to trade it, then you have depreciation, and you know, and all that you have to fight. So, um, well, I, I got to tell you that there's a lot of people that I talk with, and and I think you're right. I think that the in typically the motorhome buyer is different from a little bit from the towable buyer, and it takes a little bit longer. I mean, you are so patient. I've heard many, many positive things about, about you and taking your time. You know, because sometimes, like you said, some people take two, three, four years to make their decisions. For sure. I've worked with several customers that's taken, you know, that's taken that long. And I don't, I don't take it lightly. If I was going to spend 50, 100, $200,000, I would want somebody to do the same for me. Um, and I just try to put myself in their position. But, um, and, and I think the reason why a lot of the times my motorhome side, um, are you know a little more willing to slow down and listen and sometimes take advice sometimes not um, it's because they've already made some of those decisions i mean we've all heard the saying i've never you know made a decision that didn't cost me you know like you know we've all had decisions cost us money that we, we should we wouldn't have so if we can learn from someone else telling us then sometimes we'd rather save that ourselves and i think those folks have already experienced that in life sometimes um and, and not only that, but it's easy to turn key and hit buttons. I said that earlier about the customer traveling over, you know, even for me. Yeah, I'm, you know, I started this industry. I was, you know, 21 years old and I was in motorhome sales. But with that being said, it was, uh, you know, it was still easier. Whether you're 21 or 81, um, it doesn't matter. You, you still, you know, if I want power to my rig, I don't have to go and pull it somewhere and plug it in and run slide rooms out. All I have to do is, is if my batteries are hot turn my batteries on, crank a generator, turn the key on, and I have full power. No matter if it's snowing, raining, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't have to have another item. It's all right there in one. And I think yeah. that's got a lot to do with it. Uh, and, and secondly, you don't have to hook and unhook. Um, so it's just an easier all-in-one type deal. You have backup, side cameras. You can see all the way around it versus with towables, you can't. So I just feel if it was a way that I was going to travel, it would be a motorhome. So I guess that's what led me down that side. Talk to me about the mistakes, the most frequent mistakes that you see motorhome buyers make or you have heard from buyers that say, man, I, you know, we, we own one, but we should have, you know, what are the two or three things that people that you see that are pretty common that people go, you know, you know should have known better? Um, size, but the people always wish in hindsight, right? I mean, that's everything in life, but in reality, there's a lot of things you just have to learn. Um, and unfortunately, everything that I would say, I mean, I tell customers this all the time, you know, sometimes you think you made the right decision and you might have made the right decision for that moment. Um, but but things change. And, you know, I have, I have a customer that's set for delivery next week. I just got off the phone with them this morning. And uh, they bought, they tried to buy from me, but the one they wanted, they ended up buying a model that I showed them um, that I worked them very hard on. 
but they wanted a certain color. And again, I, I don't take it lightly that these are a lot of money. They wanted a certain color, certain options, and mine didn't have it. Mm. And if I would have ordered one at the time, it would have been a four or five month wait. Um, and the cost would have went up because that was during the whole, you know, right after COVID stint when everything was kind of going wacky. Yeah. So that being said, I, I almost, I mean, I, I pretty much told him I understand, you know, do what you have to do. Nothing against you, nothing against me. I, I get it. You know, I win some, lose some. But, you know, let us know if we can further assist. Well, here it is. I mean, not even a year and a half later. Uh, and she wants to go to a different layout. He wants to go to a different size. Um, and what's odd enough is I, I actually took them in this model when they looked with me, you know, a year and a half ago, as, as well as the one they ended up buying. But they called it because they said it was going to be too big. And I told them it was only two or three feet. When you're driving down the road, it's not going to make a difference. If anything, it could possibly help because the wheelbase being stretched will actually give you a better ride, but all they was worried about was, it's too big, it's too big. Right. Um, and, and again, sometimes, again, no matter what you say, that's just an arm, you know, an arm wrestle, or you, you don't want to get into it, right? Right. Um, you can only sometimes tell people, um, and sometimes, but the good news is, I showed them that, left it open, they made that decision, and they were still willing to come back to me. They knew that model existed because we had prior looked at it's it. It's because they could trust you. You told them the truth. And, and you know, you, it was their decision, and they're like, oh, I, I, probably. I mean, that's, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, I should have listened to that guy. But you you earned the business. But I don't fault them for not because, again, it's one of those things they've never had one. You know, it's it's hard to – how do you know what you want when you've never stepped foot? You know, you got – I tell people all the time, it is better to tiptoe in the water than jump off with those feet, Right. So if you're going to make that decision, you know, try to, you know, tiptoe in it before you just jump off. And in my industry, you know, that may for some people mean, hey, I'm going to go rent one for a weekend. That may mean I'm going to go, you know, ride with a friend or go camping with them. You know, I've heard it all. Um, but even sometimes after doing that, you know, uh, you get in one and you, you get comfortable, right, quickly. You're like, man, this is way easier than I thought. So you did make the right decision for that moment in life but or that moment in time in life, but things change, whether your grandkids want to start coming or they stop coming because they've gotten older now, they got their own jobs. Um, I'm telling you, I've heard things traded for, because I got a dog. I've heard things traded because, you know, I want to bring my dog. I mean, I've it, we've heard it and seen it, but uh, whatever their reason is, it's important to me because it's important to them. And I just try to, you know, show them what fits the need. Let's talk about maintenance. If I've never owned a motor home before, what kinds of things, Jock Milton, am I going to run into what can you help me understand before I pull the trigger on whether it's a class A, B, or Z, you know, maintenance wise? Um, well, I mean, you're asking like after purchase or prior to? Well, <laughs> after. I'm the one after. I'm the one that's going to have to take care of the damn thing. So, <laughs> after purchase, whether it be new or used, um, what you what you really want to do is at least make sure you really and truly the, the the roof is your biggest thing. I always tell customers, even if you're looking at a used one to buy it brand new. Um, for yourself uh roof is very important um walk the roof you know look at the roof the seams the seals uh that's where you know a lot of things are kind of won and lost whether you made a good purchase or not um so many of these things are very similar built but it's the like you said the maintenance of what you bought and how it was taken care of for the two to three years you know somebody may have owned it or being brand new out of the factory sit on a dealer's lot if somebody, you know, missed a, a, a seal or caught a certain, you know, front cap, I mean, it's good to know that, right? So um, a dealership like mine or, you know, Berryland for that matter, we always do a pre-delivery inspection. We do not let a trailer go out of there unless we're, you know, noting it as is and the customer knows that because of they, the way they're buying it or the year of it. It's just where I can't make it right. Mm -hmm. um, and they sometimes using it for camps or something like that. But Whenever we're doing a PDI process, we always, you know, are going to walk the roof, check the seams, check the seals. And if it's something that, you know, is cracking, dry, or, or whatever it may be, you know, we're the tech's going to tell us if it needs to be, you know, scraped and resealed or if it needs to be spot sealed. And um, we always, management always signs off on that because it's very big. Um, because you don't want somebody to leave out of there to have an issue right after they bought one, especially with water. Um, I mean, could it happen? Yes. Water could travel from anywhere. I've seen windshields do it, um, you know, but again, it's most of the time roof or wall seams. So you want to watch that and check that. At Berryland, if you make a purchase on the new or used side, we do a free roof inspection for you, uh, as long as you're a Berryland customer, every year. 
So we get up on the roof, walk it for you, because a lot of our customers, trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhomes, aren't able. You know, they're just incapable um, due to weight or due to age that they couldn't or shouldn't do that. Um, so mm. we, we do that for the customer on kind of on their and our behalf because it kind of is a, it is a checkpoint for both of us. But if something is wrong, of course, we do, you know, ask for payment to fix that item because, I mean, they could have knocked a hole in the roof by hitting a tree limb going to a campground or something could have fell on the roof. So depending on the damage, right, um, we'll tell them we need to reseal the front cap just due to age, scrape and reseal that portion. You're looking at an hour and a half to two hours, and then charge them just for that and the product, that, you know, labor and parts. Um, but the inspection itself, if it doesn't mean anything, we'll just, you know, toss them the keys and tell them to have on their way and go camping. Um, so we don't look for work, trust us. We already got enough of that, but we definitely want to make sure the customers are okay. Obviously, you would like for people to buy a motorhome through you. I mean, be foolish to not say that. But what should someone look for in a dealer? Because, you know, recently, without saying, you know, who they were or what they bought, uh, you know, I spoke with a man that, that traveled past a couple of other dealers that he could have bought from, but he came to you for a reason. What if I'm looking at buying, why should I drive to Louisiana to buy a, you know, a motor home? What should I be asking the dealer? What should I be looking for before I pull the trigger? Um, try to find the dealer that sets themselves apart. Try to find somebody that's looking to help also their side to build that relationship because uh, you're, you, you should want to be more than just a number. Uh, when you're spending this kind of money, you need to be treated that way. Uh, and that's, again, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome. They're all expensive items. And you should want to travel to, you know, or, you know, stay local, wherever it may be, to find that dealer that is going to build that relationship with you. Um, because that's who deserves it. That's who deserves business because it's more than, hey, I have a question. After the sale, some sales guys, some dealerships, they really don't care because they're such – there's another 12 calls coming in today to buy more and they'll just forget you and, you know, grab another call. Um, but, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, pyramid schemes, you know, you always hear negative about them. Well, in reality, I know the opposite is true because I can tell you, you take care of one and you take care of that one properly. It, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll come, it'll stem off, right? Just like the rest of the old pyramid. It'll, uh, it'll build itself a huge foundation and it'll just keep building if you keep doing it right. And it all starts with one, you know? So, uh, I mean, that's Mr. Mike, he's, he's done it through work. I mean, there's countless stories out there, but you take care of one and it, and it builds. So, uh, I, I feel that it's very important for you to have that relationship with your customer. And then after you're in sales is to have that customer build it with the service department, because your customers, if they build that relationship with the service department, they're, they're going to get treated, you know, with utmost respect, even though they should in the first place, I'm just telling you, you get a lot more done with honey than you do anything else. I can't tell you how true what Jock just said is, and it's the same whether you're getting your RV service work performed or pretty much anything else. You'll get a lot further if you're nice and respectful. Now that does not mean to go be some kind of a weak doormat, not at all. Now Jock also mentioned that the owner, he calls him Mr. Mike. Let me tell you something, Mr. Mike is a good man, he is. He has good, honorable people working for him. All right, another thing I want to go back to that we discussed is inspections. I'm not sure how you feel about inspections, but I believe that having an extra set of eyes that are trained to know what to look for can provide some real peace of mind for a buyer. The thing is, though, not all RV inspectors are alike, not by a long shot. Some of them are lazy and sloppy, and they can, they can miss a lot. They really can. On the other end of the spectrum, it seems like some RV inspectors want to well, they want to nitpick everything to death. And whether they admit it or not, I believe that many RV inspectors can kill a deal that could have been salvaged. While I can't and I don't recommend any specific inspector on a personal basis, I do know that there is an organization of RV inspectors that you can contact if you'd like. A link to them is down below. Now, before we get out of here, have you posted your favorite type of RV. It's going to be interesting to see the, I don't know, the variety of what folks like best. So I'd like to hear from you. For now, I'm the wingman reminding you, be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home. I'll see you next time.